and one would be the narrator, but his brother would just go, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? And they would break down the whole thing, how they wow. would walk into a house, and the chick would approach him, and then she'd bring him into, like, a bigger type room, and him and his brother could pick the girls. Then they'd go into different rooms, and the chick would take a bucket out and wash his dick, scrub it down, no condom. Oh, my God. Yeah. No comment. I, I don't think the soap, no, this soap is, doesn't anything. This is 1977. Yeah. You know, yeah. We were we were still seven years away from AIDS. Yeah. You know, we had no knowledge of AIDS. All we thought was we could either get crabs, that other shit you got, and you went to the doctor and they gave you pills, and you were back to right. the later slinging dick right. with a little weird smell to your dick. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so that was it. So they would tell us how they would go there and get. I remember him saying around the world the first time. I fucking oh, really? died of laughter. That was the first person ever that I yeah. heard that term. I go, so what do you pay? And he goes, uh, $10, they fuck you straight. They get on top of you and fuck you till you uh -huh. come. You come in them for an extra $2. Jeez. Or you could wear a condom. Like, you know, just fucking different yeah. prizes. Yeah. And then, I, and then I go, like, what else? And then they go, for like 15 you can eat them. For 20 25 you're getting around the world. He goes, I did that one time. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it was just for twenty five wow. hours you getting around the world. Yeah, I wonder what ever happened to those boys. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, nothing good. I, lost, I don't no, think. I lost contact with them in high school. They were, yeah. they were like mechanics or something. They were very good with their hands. Yeah. So, but but that's not what we're talking about. The main thing was. That lifted everybody around to curiosity. Mm -hmm. But now we decided how we were going to do it. You had no options. I could do it like them. I could uh, go to one of those clubs in the city. Or I could just get a girlfriend. You follow me? So mm -hmm. that's, that's part of being 13. Now you decide how you want to do it. That tells a lot about you at the right. age of 13 or 14. You know? Me, I was scared of all that stuff. Yeah. I was petrified. Well, because it's scary. I never talked the whole a big game scary. about it. I yeah. avoided the conversation. Yeah. Like after the porn movie, I was done. Yeah. <clears throat> I was done. And then years later, I got involved in a car ride that uh -huh. I couldn't get out of. It was the kid's birthday. And as I'm going, I'm, they're going to the 1040 club. Yeah. So now I'm in the car with them, and that was it. I lived it fully that night. That was the most disgusting thing that's ever happened to me. That was, I paid $10 to get raped. Yeah. Like, I left there, I didn't want to have sex for a right. year or two. Like, that's it. Well, that's the, uh, also, and, and I don't mean to deflect from your story, because that reminds me, no, uh, because in... I had to look at it that way. I haven't looked at it that way in a long time. Because in the movie, Jean Pompa shares a story about going to a kid's house, and it was a brother and a stepsister, a stepsister, and that the brother would make this... And they were only like a year or two apart. I think they were like 12, 13, 14-ish. And how they had sex, and then they kind of made Jean have sex or whatever. And the way he was telling the story, it was a funny story. But at the end of the story, you're like, fuck, dude, that's molestation. Like, that is, you guys are fucking each other up. You know what I mean? And obviously, something is going on at that house if they're dragging someone else into it. But when, you, when, you, when men talk about things that happen, they tend to romanticize it and make it funny. But then when you have them in an intimate uh, uh, moment and they're sharing the story with you, and the funniness goes away, you're like, no, that's, someone really molested you, you know, and I don't mean it like everyone's molested and everyone's raped, I'm just saying it's, no, it's a different it's thing, a diff you, you know, don't even get what you're doing, when you I went to the yeah. 1040 Club, it was such a shocking experience that it, you know, like it was like, that. that's too right. real for me. Yeah, I wasn't ready for it. It's like when I bought Master Reality by Black Sabbath. <laughs> I really like him, but this is a little too yeah. real for me right now. My mom just died. I just did yes, fucking yes. Crystal fucking THC. Yes. The Exorcist is on the other TV. This is a bit fucking we <laughs> happy yeah, right yeah, now. You know what I'm yeah. When I went over to the city that night and I saw that degree of prostitution that night yeah. as a 16-year-old. Let's, let, let's, let's clock it at 16-year-old. A fucking comedy store main room. Take the tables out. 
take the stage out, put two bartenders at each corner selling the four light alcohols and soda that taste like shit. They cut the booze and 200 guys waiting to get their dicks up and there's 40 women in there. Mm -hmm. It was fucking traumatizing. Yeah. And I also learned about men. If there was 200 men in there, 180 of those guys that were very braggadocio, these are the guys in the corner that would never fuck a prostitute, that everybody wants to suck their dick. They all had cologne on. They all were done to the nines spectacularly. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. They were all shaved, their hairs, and I learned a lot that night on the other side yeah. of about a braggadocio man. That mm-hmm. the, Here they are paying $10 just how I am, and I'm not even sexually experienced. These were the guys that were always sexually experienced and they had women eating their fucking ball sack and, you know, and all this shit. And here they are standing right next to me waiting for the same fucking dirty pussy I'm waiting on. Yeah. Like, I left there that night disgusted in manhood and disgusted in women. Like, that whole night just right, shocked me. Like, right. And it was great. It was a great age to get disgusted at. Yeah. At that time, I was maybe, yeah, like I said, 16, maybe, said, I don't know. I wasn't driving. Yeah. I wasn't driving. It's just that uh, I know uh, for my own self, my introduction to sex was uh, all within my own control because my parents, which I feel very fortunate about and have a, f- a fun and fond memories of being a little kid and my parents had in this box in the hallway closet True Detective magazines and Playboys. And I can remember from the age of like 8 to 12 going in and then once I found it, you know, uh, going in and just looking at the pictures and really digging. And I'm not into chicks anyway, but just really thinking how beautiful they were and how like excited it made me feel. You know what I mean? And so I, I love that I had that introduction, gentle introduction to sex. Like, I have a friend who her experience with that obviously was way, way different. And uh, I'm always curious, like, how does it affect people later in life, their sex life later? And when I was 18 and I started stripping, for me, it didn't, because I had such a, my parents w- weren't weird about sex and it was out in the open. My mother was German. So like when I was a kid, we go to the park, people sunbathe with their boobs hanging out in Germany when I was a kid in the seventies. And, and so growing up and, and without shame involved with sex, uh, is a powerful thing. And when I was a stripper, it, it wasn't a negative for me. It was a, an empowering thing for me. You know what I mean? Because I didn't have a lot of power growing up, and my parents got divorced. And, you know, everyone has a sob story, right? We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.